I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Nicaragua. As someone who lives in Nicaragua, I got asked when watching my videos, one of my viewers, and a lot of people have had this question, what is that thing that we hear people saying? You walk by people in the street and often you'll hear someone say, adio, and they move past. It's just a thing that people are clearly saying in passing to each other. What is that? What does it mean? Where does it come from? We're going to get to that, this little bit of Nicaraguan culture, right after the bump. Newcomers to Nicaragua are often surprised by hearing adio everywhere they go. Man, you'll hear it in multiple places, but the one that surprises people is in my videos. I do a lot of walking through the streets and you'll hear people say it to me as I'm passing by. And this really catches people by surprise. So the first thing we have to figure out is what exactly are they saying? Here in Nicaragua, whether it is just a trick of linguistics or it is a French influence, as many people have told me may actually be the case, it is common for the sounds of things like an S at the end of a word to be dropped. And this is common in lots of different languages in a lot of different regions. So this is not unique in any way, but it is not something you hear that much in Spanish. And so especially if you're used to Guatemalan or Mexican or Spanish, Spanish, Spain, Spanish, you will likely not be familiar with people dropping the S at the end of the words. But there's a lot of words like this here in Nicaragua. So it's something you need to be aware of that you have to listen for that the N S's and sometimes some other letters of words may be missing. And this can make it very difficult, especially as a non-native speaker, to identify what exactly is being said. Of course, if you are a uh, native Spanish speaker, it still presents a little bit of a challenge, but it's very minor because you can generally fill in what you're hearing. But if you are not a native Spanish speaker, especially if you're like a learner and you're trying to figure this out, it can be extremely difficult because careful, important identifiers to words that you're used to hearing may not be there. You also have the problem that what is written as a B and a V that in English are very discreet. B and V do not exist in Spanish. Those two are just way, two different ways to write the same sound. And here in Nicaragua, we are a spoken Spanish country, not a written Spanish country. So the language is done phonetically. And so something you hear, such as the village that I live in, the barrio, is Sutiava. But it could be written with a B or a V. And plus there's an extra B or V that may be in there as well. So there's many different ways to spell the name of the barrio, and they're all correct. There isn't one way is correct and one way isn't. Whereas in formal Spanish in the rest of the world, there are official ways to spell things and the history of which letter is used is meant for identification or something else, even though the sounds are actually the same. In many places, you'll actually hear people pronounce them differently, especially North American, American Spanish from the United States. You're going to hear really strong B's and V's, right? So words like vivir, to live, is going to be a very strong V sound. And bebir, to drink, is going to be a very strong B sound. But here they're going to sound essentially identical. There's almost no way to tell them apart. And banyarme, I'm going to shower, or I'm showering, uh, or I'm bathing technically, uh, sounds often like banyarme. And that vun sound is so confusing when you're expecting a b sound. So that's, there's a lot of these little linguistic things that can be very confusing, especially in Nicaragua, where they're either stronger or exist where th other things don't. So if we're dropping an S sound off the end of words, what is adio? It is adios, which you're probably used to. Most English speakers are familiar with the term adios. It means goodbye. It's one of the few words that everybody learns in Spanish. Even people with only the most casual knowledge of the language generally know things like hola and si and adios. And we're like, oh, adios. Okay, that means goodbye. Wait a second. But you pass someone in the street. Sometimes you'll see me talking to someone and I'll leave and I say adios or I'll say adio because we don't say the S here. And, and the same thing. You know, you're in, in America, we learn to say buenos dias as good day, right? Which we use for good morning, basically. It's a, it's a greeting. It's not a farewell, as you often would say in English. If we said good day, that's often a we're leaving, kind of a formal I'm, I'll see you later sort of thing. Whereas good morning, we often use as a greeting. So we're, we're a little bit quirky in this on the English world side. In the Spanish world, uh, buenos dias or good days uh, is, is a greeting, not a, not a farewell. However, here and in much of the Spanish-speaking world, it is bueno dia, this singular. But here in Nicaragua, it's not actually singular. It sounds singular because the S is being dropped. You could argue that it's both singular and plural because there is no singular and plural in Nicaragua, and that is true in a way, so that, that's possible. 
but uh, in the Portuguese world, they don't use the plural that I'm aware of. Every time I see it, it's singular. Uh, the Spanish world tends to write it in the plural, but many places say it in the singular. When I took Spanish in school, they taught us that it was always plural, no exceptions. They also taught us that while uh, buenas tardes, good afternoons, is never used in the real world. We find that it's always used, possibly more than anything else. Though that was one of the many things that I learned wrong when taking Spanish in school. Uh, now, as I'm older, I look back and realize that my Spanish teachers really had extremely little exposure to Spanish, and while they claimed a lot of proficiency in the language, the reality was they were very rudimentary speakers. And while they had survival Spanish, they don't have conversational Spanish anywhere near the level that I do today. And so that is just something that really shocks me. You know, I really believed at the time that I would never come close to the proficiency that my teachers had in Spanish. Of course, I also didn't expect to be living in a Latin American country where I would be speaking it every day, but uh, they really um, made it seem like they could go places and, and, you know, pass as a native speaker, which was not even remotely the case. They wouldn't pass the most casual of written tests because there were basic Spanish phrases they weren't really familiar with and they weren't familiar with common usages. Okay, but so how are we using adios in this situation then? If we use it when we're saying goodbye, we've been talking to someone, we're leaving now, and you say it, everyone's clear, I think. That does not need explanation. But you're passing someone on the street. If you're doing this in the United States, for example, in English, you might say hey or hello or what's up. You have some kind of basic greeting that is a greeting. In much of the Spanish world, this is going to be the same. And so if you see textbooks and such from basically anywhere telling you what you would say in these circumstances, they'll often show that you say hola or buenos for buenos dias, just shortened, or buenos dias, something like that. Very basic, very straightforward. You could guess. You don't really need a textbook to tell you. You don't need someone to teach you. If you already knew that those were greetings, you could use those greetings in the street, and absolutely you can use them here. People aren't going to be like freaked out or anything. They're not going to be confused, but it's not what people tend to do. You never really hear those. I'm not saying you never do. You definitely hear buenos quite a bit. Hola, you will hear very little. Adio, you will hear the majority of the time in my experience. This is immediately when we got here, this is one of the first things we asked about. And, and it was explained, and like, yes, everyone does this. Yes, even Spanish speakers from all over the Latin American world are confused by this. So it's okay that you are confused too. What is happening, and this actually makes a lot of sense when you stop and think about it. When you're passing someone on the street, we are, we're passing them. We're not really greeting them in the, in the traditional sense. We're not initiating a conversation. We're also not saying goodbye because we haven't been hanging out with them. So there isn't really a thing that makes a lot of sense and you don't say everything. It's just a lot going on. Someone's walking by, you're kind of acknowledging that you uh, acknowledge that they're there, you recognize them passing you, and you want to be friendly. So that's kind of why we do it. It's awkward, really, in a lot of ways, but it's nice and it kind of gives a moment. What if you wanted to have a conversation? It opens the door that, yes, you could ask me something. So you're passing someone on the street and you're like, hey, what's up? And they're like, can I ask you, is this the right way to the Walmart? Right? It kind of gives that invitation. I don't want to make you not say hi to people because you don't want to inv invite that conversation, but we kind of all accept that that is a moment where you could kind of ask someone something. So most of the world, but certainly not all of it, chooses to use a word that is in greeting when this happens. You're passing someone on the street, so you greet them. Hey, but in reality, it is equally sensible to say goodbye to them. You're not you know, going to be hanging out any longer. They're passing you, so that interaction is ending. And so you can say goodbye. Now, in English, if you did this on the street, somewhere in, you know, New York, they're going to think you're crazy. Like, we weren't talking, why are you saying goodbye? Because culturally, we don't use that. Here in Nicaragua, they opted for the opposite. Instead of saying hello to someone you're not going to be having an, an engaging conversation with, someone you're not actually greeting, they simply say goodbye, because the transaction of passing each other is ending. And so, if you really stop and think about it, it is just equally logical that when you're saying something to acknowledge that someone is there or was there, they opt for the was instead of the is about to be. It's funny that such a thing exists, and it's really interesting that here it ended up having this opposite uh, 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 approach in such an isolated area, but that's all that's happening. So it's the combination of no S on the end, so you're not hearing the adios, it's just an audio, and it is simply saying goodbye instead of hello as you pass someone in the street because 
your transition has ended. Now there is a precedence for this uh, in a couple different places. One, and it's I'm sure not linguistically uh, tied in any way, but in Hawaii, famously, aloha means hello and goodbye. Uh, so you can use it that way and think of adios as being like aloha. Not related to it, but it happens to be a five letter A starting word that does the same thing. Much more likely to somehow be tied to it, at least ideal, uh, ideologically, is the word ciao from Venice. For those who don't know, ciao is not an Italian word, even though Italians often think it is too. It is actually a Venetian word that very quickly made its way into the Italian language and spread throughout Europe. So most of Europe and much of Latin America, especially South America, use ciao very commonly. They don't all spell it the same, but they use it the same. It means the same thing. And it is this really ancient Venetian word that basically works the same. You can say hello, you can say goodbye, you can say cheers. It's a very general purpose greeting and well-being kind of word. That heritage has kind of made its way into adio here in Nicaragua directly, or maybe it was just some far-flung influence that someone said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we used a word like this, but I don't want to use chow? We have one, we'll use adios. Okay, cool. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know, but that is the linguistic history of it. Now, as far as adios, people often want to know what that is since we're talking about it, and this would be a really short video if I didn't talk about anything else. Adios is uh, actually what, it's two words that have just run together over time. It is literally adios, which is to God. Now, what does that mean in the context of saying goodbye to someone? It actually means a lot. What it is short for, or in meaning it is short for, is you are leaving my care. You are going out from my care and you, I am commending you unto the care of the Lord. God is now watching over you because I am no longer watching over you. When you are with someone, when you're having a conversation, or they're a guest in your home, or anything like that, there's this mentality, especially in places like Latin America and Europe, where this linguistically uh, originated, that you watch over, you have a responsibility for the care and protection and shelter and housing and, and food of a person that you're with. But once they leave you, once you're saying goodbye, they are going out into the world and now it's God's job to take care of them or the next person that they meet. And so we commend people unto the care of the Lord as a way of saying that, you know, I've been watching over you and I hope you uh, are safe until the next person watches over you. This is mimicked uh, throughout the world, uh, especially, you know, European influenced languages. We see the same word identical really in French with adieu. Uh, that is exactly the same thing, just pronounced in French. You're going to find this in different languages, and it really comes from the Latin originally, and so you're going to see it shared across that region. It's an interesting bit of linguistic history and connection, and it has this really deep-seated meaning that has been completely lost, and there's multiple words and turned into one word, and now we've dropped letters at the end, so at the end of the day, this really complex historical meaning is being attributed to something that is so distant from the original words that it is often hard to trace it back and understand where it really came from. In Spanish, and I've never heard Spanish speakers use this, it is more of an old-fashioned and often, I think, northern Mexico or southern United States Spanish-speaking thing, but you'll hear people say vaya con Dios, and that means, you know, go with God, which is very much adios, but in a more formal way or a more lengthy way, more poetic way, perhaps, but very, uh, very similar. So that is the little tiny bit of history of adios and explaining how we ended up at adio and why we use it in a weird way here in Nicaragua. But it is an important one to know that you really do use that everywhere, no matter what you're doing, walk up to people and as you pass them on the street, feel comfortable saying adio. You don't need the S on the end. I'm not soft pronouncing the S. It's really not there. And uh, you really can say it at all these times. Basically, anytime you'd say ciao, except when you are clinking glasses, you definitely do not say it. Then you say salute, good health. Uh, so that's our little bit here in Nicaragua about our culture and our little intricacies of Spanish speaking here. I also want to uh, talk just real quickly for those who are hanging out. We do have a little bit of an announcement. We're going to make a big video about this at some point, but we turned on memberships because basically YouTube really pushed us to do this and gave it a try and they incentivized like, give it a try. And I don't need people to do this. Uh, if people don't want to, like I, I'm really not like this is a thing we got to do, but we've turned on memberships. And what this does is allows you to sign up and be a member of our little community here for $4.99 a month. It is month 
monthly, right? It's a membership thing. It's a subscription thing. It's it's really meant for people who just really want a good mechanism to, to really strongly supporting the channel and helping to ensure that we have a steady bit of revenue to help cover our costs and stuff. So I totally understand if people don't want to do it. I don't want people to feel pressured. I hate uh, any kind of like fundraising on the thing. I know we're like, buy me a coffee and stuff. I want to make, because people do ask me like, how do we give you just a little bit? How do we do that? We have these little mechanisms. I want to make sure that people have access to it. Um, I don't want to be like, you can't give me money because obviously the support really helps and it's really appreciated. But uh, I, I really don't know how the membership system is beneficial. Um, I think the whole thing's very quirky, so I'm not a big supporter of it. However, I totally understand that it makes for a really simple means of supporting the channel, that you can just go join, and it's just a super supportive thing that is ongoing, and you know, if we had, a hundred people who decided to do that, we would have this really strong um, kind of just basic revenue coming in that would uh, help pay for cameras and stuff. So, uh, but you know, you can do the same thing by buying me a coffee. You know, w one coffee once a month actually gives me a little bit more. I could turn on memberships over there if that's something that people want. However, by doing it here on YouTube, we are able to make like members only sections here that allow you to like, we can do a few things. Like they're all listed down there if you look at the membership stuff, um, but we have the ability to do like private photos and some things just so you guys can keep up a little bit more but if we are going to do membership in other places as well the one thing that i think is cool is we're going to do um, a members only uh chat room so that all the members and i can talk and me can talk to no and i <laughs> can talk to each other uh, and, and have uh, an ongoing live conversation um, all the time uh, which hopefully kick ideas around, answer things, um, prepare for different things, announce stuff when it's coming up. Of course, we want to have, we want, we need to come up with like a mailing list for, for uh, lives and stuff like that. Anyway, that's different. And it gives you like stickers and emojis and some little badges. And like, it's got a few little things. None of it's actually worth money. The only reason to do the membership is to support the channel. All the other stuff is really just goofy, but the chat room, that's pretty cool. But we can do memberships through some other mechanism that is a bit more efficient uh, if that's something that people are actually interested in. But if you've seen the join button show up down there, that is why um, we were pressured to do it. It is not me being like, I gotta do this, we gotta come up. No, if, if no one does it, I am perfectly happy with that. Uh, but if people do wanna support the show that way, if that's a good mechanism for that, then I'm thrilled and, th and that really does help us out. So you know, consider what it is that uh, makes sense for you. But uh, certainly we know a lot of our audience are struggling financially. That's one of the reasons that people do come and watch shows about relocating to Nicaragua. This is often a refuge for people who are uh, struggling significantly because of where they've been living and the cost of living and they need every last penny to be able to relocate and trying to make ends meet. Absolutely nobody should feel pressure uh, to support the show, right? We wanna be able to buy cameras and pay for all these things, one way or another that will happen and uh, sure there, we may have fewer toys we may not be able to do all the trips that we wish we could do but certainly we don't want to be in any way a stumbling block to someone uh, who needs it only if you are comfortably able to support the show would we want you to do so uh, so anyway thank you if you'd like to buy me a coffee you know a one-time normal everyday coffee we'll put the banner up here buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller it's like patreon comes straight to me and uh other than that boy like subscribe watch another episode if you want to support the show if you can't afford to do any of these things to support the show you can always watch and like and comment the more you do that the more it supports the show as well so that is very much appreciated uh just the same so thanks for joining me and uh, i will see all of you tomorrow